Hey everyone, Roy Liver here and welcome to 9 improvements I want to see with SoRare in 2022. And you know, I'm a massive fan of SoRare as someone who's played FIFA Ultimate Team and Fantasy Premier League games for as long as I can remember. SoRare is essentially the perfect blend of those two, so what's not to love about that? But of course, that doesn't mean SoRare can't be improved and made better for everyone. Now, they've made some great strides in recent times with the introduction of the La Liga and Bundesliga partnerships, you know, the fundraising runs they've had as well as other improvements they've made. But today, I'm going to be going over 9 more things that could really improve the SoRare experience. So in no particular order of importance or priority, number one on my list is an optimised mobile experience when using SoRare on the phone. Obviously the best way to do that is by SoRare creating an official native app on iOS, Android, any phone capable of having apps basically. Right now using SoRare on mobile devices is a bit clunky, I try to avoid it and only use SoRare on desktop right now. So assuming SoRare can get around age, licensing and in-app purchasing limitations, I think this should be one of their highest priority developments coming next year. They've had a lot of investment recently and this would not only show people that SoRare are a serious company in the NFT crypto space, but it would also open up new marketing opportunities, I'm sure. So definitely hoping we see a mobile app sooner rather than later. And number two on the list is quite a simple one, and that would be to have a fully fledged dark mode on the site. Now, I'm a big fan of dark modes. I use them on any app or site that has it available as I'm a bit sensitive to bright lights. And we've sort of had a brief look of what a dark mode may look like after the recent play page update. So I'm hoping the team can expand on this and make a dark mode available across the whole site for people like myself who would want to use it. And the next improvement is one that gets complained about every week on the Discord and for good reason as well and that's the current reward situation in SO5. Right now tiering is a mess, certain players are in tier 1 that shouldn't be and people often say that DNPs should have their own 4th tier added to the reward pools, obviously to increase the prizes given out even if it's a low reward not worth much it's better than nothing and I'd agree personally. I also think the distribution is a bit rogue in places, the under 23 bracket always seemingly gets shafted in terms of the amount of players dished out there, the super rare division has really low reward probabilities, leaving a lot of average scoring super rares without much value or utility. Similar things are happening with the limited divisions right now. You know, we're not seeing the full scope of cards being rewarded and dished out there, so obviously that's affecting the market and causing a bit of a crash in price on a lot of limited cards. I'm sure the long-awaited progression bar will alleviate some of these reward issues that we're currently seeing, but we don't know when that's coming, so I think right now a fix is needed for a lot of these reward issues until that progression bar gets here. And then for the fourth improvement, I would also like to see the scoring matrix get improved in places. Overall, it's generally quite solid and is doing a decent job at the moment, but some things are quite wrong with it that severely affect the scores a player can get in so 5. For example, as Tekra said here in the Discord, goalkeepers are getting penalised for misplaced passes, and not just misplaced passes, but misplaced goal kicks. You know, goal kicks the opposing team are getting their head on first, and that's something basically out of the keeper's control, yet there's no chance of a keeper getting these points back in any way as it doesn't score successful passes. So it just seems a bit imbalanced there. Another one that could be addressed, for example, is players not getting any penalty one points if the penalty taker then misses. For example, my Tobias Keynes here, he could win a penalty and then Dario Tadic could miss it and this would cost Keynes the additional points for winning the penalty. This is despite him not being at fault for the miss, you know, he's done all he can, now it's up to his player and his player's missed, yet he doesn't get the points for this. I just think a few simple adjustments here and there could correct a lot of these issues and really improve the matrix as a solid scoring system going forward. And then getting into the more nitty gritty improvements I think Sarah needs, I definitely feel like a counter offer feature could go a long way in smoothening out the trade experience between managers. I know it's something a team have thought about implementing in potential ways but we're yet to see this feature. I think something as simple where someone offers me 0.023 Ethereum for my Lyco Giannis. Instead of just rejecting I can click a box saying counter offer and type in that I want 0.028 Ethereum for example. And then the other manager will see this rebuttal and they can decide for themselves. So I could even add a counter offer section up here on the left specifically for these types of offers to make them easier to see and keep track of. And maybe they could even add a text box to allow managers to talk to each other although it's probably best that is kept to Discord as I'm sure the server staff don't want to have to police and reprimand people for bad language and such so uh, not sure if we'd ever see that but yeah definitely some kind of counter offer feature would definitely facilitate a cleaner trading process for everyone. And number six on the list improvements I would love to see is the option to save predefined search filters. Pretty self-explanatory but on the auctions and manager sales market I often find myself searching for the same criteria. Instead of having to go back and redefine the search terms every time I enter the page I think having an option to save a filter would be great. So we could even rename the favourites drop down here to a filter section and then you'd have your favourites at the top and then any other save filters would go in here just allowing you to easily select them. Maybe you can even name them yourself. Just something small like this could really improve the flow of browsing the markets on the site I think. Number seven, I'd love to see training improve. Right now it's a bit boring and tedious each game week entering training teams especially if you have a lot of cards in your club. Right now I have close to 10 teams I'm entering each game week in training and I don't even have that big of a club so could definitely streamline this in some way. I'm not 100% sure how they would 
go about doing this, but there's some smart people out there, a lot smarter than me in fact, so I'm sure they could manifest some thoughts on how to improve training going forward. Number eight, very small one, but I'd love to see more organization and perhaps even customization on the live play page. Give us the option to hide players in training, let us filter on the competition and division to see the fixture times and live scores and such. I know in theory we can scroll down, click the division, click the player and see the information there, but I feel like changing this in a way to make it more friendly to the user would optimize the page for sure. I definitely don't care about seeing all my training players who've got DMPs clogging up the page, so yeah, just add some filters to allow us to sort this or perhaps even organize the players based on the competition we've put them in. Just some small quality of life changes that would make the page flow a bit better. And finally, I think Sower could do a bit of work to improve the awards section of the site. Right now, it's okay, it is what it is. We can buy a few badges and themes for some coins. That's about it. I'm not too interested in any of that personally, but I just feel like they could do more of this. Perhaps allow us to buy common goalkeeper drops with our coins, maybe even specifically design a reward card with its own unique color that we can trade our coins in to lock one of these into our accounts. Nothing too big like an Mbappe or Haaland, obviously, but even some tier three or tier two cards that can act as limited cards, but are locked to our accounts like commons are, and obviously don't affect the actual amount of tradable cards on the market. I don't know exactly what they could do with this or whether any of what I've just suggested would work, but I definitely think they can do more of it right now. And I'm sure they will expand that in the coming years. It's definitely not a priority, but right now, as it's just skins and badges and themes, I definitely think they could expand on this a bit. Now, a lot of these, in fact, probably all of these have been suggested before, but I just think some of these core ideas here could really improve Sower across the board, not just in terms of the interface and how ergonomically well the site is, but also in terms of how us managers can play and get rewarded and communicate with each other. As I said, hopefully a lot of these are in the works and we could potentially see them next year. I've mentioned we've also got the progression bar on the way. There's also academy divisions coming soon to look forward to, to give some of those lower scoring cards more utility. So yeah, looking forward to the changes coming in the next year or so. And as always, Always comment down below in case you think I've missed any big improvements the site could make and do like and subscribe for more Sower content in the future. I really appreciate it and thanks for watching darlings.